first started, we really didn't know what to expect. We kind of braced ourselves. When it hit real big and the big plants were shutting down and lots of businesses and states were shutting down, we had an influx at the small and very small meat processors level. And so we had to start saying no to appointments when we're used to saying yes. Pre-COVID, we could probably pretty much get you in an appointment in about hmm, four, four to five weeks. Um, when COVID hit, all of a sudden, all of 2020 was booked up with all the slots that we knew that we could actually process the animals. We worked at full capacity for the last year and a half. We never thought about a pandemic. Maybe we'll never have to again. But that same supply chain interruption could have happened by a tornado that hit the plant or a natural disaster that knocked them out of electricity for 30 or 60 days. There's all sorts of things that could have happened and the pandemic brought all that to light. Through the wisdom of, of the commissioner's office, Trotter's office, the, the legislature, uh, the governor, Congress approving the CARES money to begin with, and somebody in, in the commissioner's office saying, well, you know, our packing houses, there's not many of them, but independent packing houses can help fill up some of this gap that we have, have basically overlooked. And if it hadn't been for them, we'd never had these grants. The state didn't come up with a plan. They came up with identifying a need and then everybody figured out how to solve it. Yeah, because my needs might be different from a different Absolutely. processors, but what my needs were through this process was able to help be helped out. And so the program never dictated what help would be provided. Exactly. Uh, we said, here's a pool of money. What would you do with the money if you had it? And we got, with a 57 grantees, we had 57 different ideas of how to spend that money. And here now, well, uh, when they give us this grant, I thought that was a dream. Thanks to the grant, we were able to increase production by a lot. We are able to build this retail store and help the local community out. After we expanding the business, we can accept all custom meat. Uh, so farmers will come anytime. Uh, we have can have their our menu to show them what we can do for them. You know, we, we've always uh, kind of had an idea what we would need, but when you have that extra demand come up, it really, you know, really sees and, uh, what we can do. And it also, I think, is going to give us the opportunity to be uh, at better price points for a lot of our, uh, you know, meat handlers. The impact grant was just wonderful because when we started actually looking at the project and what our needs really were, at first we thought all we really just needed was more hanging capacity. Um, but when we started looking at the whole chain, we realized we needed more employees, um, so we were able through the impact grant to kind of put in a training program for skilled meat cutters. Our project included a building a, installing a new freezer and um, upgrading our storage area and loading dock and just some equipment. With this grant, adding the throughput for our farmers and the increased capacity to process, we've also added jobs for our community. Big thank you to Commissioner Troxler um, for seeing the need and helping implement it and tasking those people to make it to actually make it happen it's been wonderful so thank you commissioner Troxler and all those that were involved in this project we're just so appreciative and thank you so much i think this is kind of a once in a uh, lifetime so to speak opportunity for a business like us thanks to commissioner Troxler and all the people at the department of agriculture that jumped in and made these grants happen thank you north carolina department of agriculture and thank you the commissioner and thanks united states i would like to take this opportunity to thank the legislature and mr Troxler for this opportunity thank you <laughs>